And now it's time for Blogger's Blurb. Uh, Josh yes, Lockhart, the uh, Dynamiter <laughs> blogger, <laughs> in with us uh, for this second period intermission. And uh, first of all, uh, Happy New Year and all that wonderful stuff. And <laughs> Happy New Year to was, you. Was too. Santa good to you? Indeed. More to my kids than me, but yes, Santa was good to me. Yes. If, if he's good to your kids, that means he's good to you. <laughs> Trust me. Yes. <laughs> my kids are a little older now. It's grandkids that, that yes. make up the day. <laughs> totally. So, what, what were your activities over the holidays? Oh, man. well, to be honest, I've just started my, well, I don't want to say just started, um, a, a week tomorrow I will have been on my break. So it's primarily been just the Christmas, Christmas. get-togethers and stuff uh, with, with friends. Uh, outside of that, it's just, we've been trying to do one activity a day. Okay. And so far, it's been Boxing Day, we went shopping. And then is that actually an activity? <laughs> oh, it is when you get when you're leaving at 7:30 in the morning to make sure you're the first one in the store. Oh, Boxing yeah. Day! Yeah, yeah Boxing, Boxing Day. day. You yes, got to be indeed. the first one there. Uh, and then we've, you know, we came to the arena uh, two days ago, uh, the day after Boxing Day, and we skated around. And you don't really understand how big this ice surface is until you're skating on it. <laughs> When you're just walking around the arena, you're just like, eh, it's not eh, that big. It's not that big. Skating around on that, like, those players are fast. <laughs> I'm trying to get, like, down to my kids, like, counting 12, 13, 14. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then today we had a family friend come and visit us. So it's been, I, I like relaxing, that's lounging around next that's week. And that's I'm, this time of year. It should be yeah, that way. Next week is getting to the honey-do list. Uh, so, Good luck with that. Yeah, thanks. How about you for holidays? Very quiet. We had a, a very nice uh, a dinner at my mother-in-law's house uh, on Christmas Day, oh, nice. uh, which is fine because uh, she has not longed for this world. So mm. uh, it was nice to have one one last Christmas dinner at, at her place. It was yep. a it was, it was a, a great time. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Awesome. And, uh, we had some of the uh, some of the Dynamiter help, helpers with us. We had uh, uh, Neil uh, <coughs> Neil Rye was uh, was is. Uh, a boyfriend of mm-hmm. one of uh, one of grandma's uh, granddaughters. Oh, so that was that was kind of cool. Uh, small world, but, uh, <laughs> small world indeed. So let's talk about uh, the Dynamiters and, and the first half of the season. You know, I'll be honest. I think they well they went into the season expecting to be first place by Christmas time. They, they, that was their goal to be first goal. place by Christmas and. I think they were talking just in their division, but their first place in their division and in the conference and in the league. So, impressive start. Uh, I'll, I'll, I don't think I, I expected them to do well, but I didn't expect them to do this well. I'll be honest. Okay. Well, we both picked them to, to win the division. We did. Yes. Um, and we also both kind of mispredicted the uh, the Crescent Valley Thundercats. I I was a little less missed than you were. <laughs> But like, yes. that, that, that's old news. We won't we won't go we through won't that, again. that again. I don't want to embarrass you on on the on the last uh, webcast of the season. Um, but what else uh, has has impressed you or or um, thought maybe that could have been better for the Dynamiters in the first half of the year? Could have been better. Uh-huh. What has impressed you with the Dynamiters? Let's what, go with that. Okay. Finishing yeah. first first in the league is pretty good. Hard to yeah. be depressed. So. What has impressed me, I think, has just been like the the team cohesion. Uh, not that there was a ton of turnover, but Derek Stewart has done a lot of shifting with the the lineup, bringing players in even during the season. So having someone like Campbell come into the season, yeah, he missed like three games, but to get to have him come back in and then win player or be awarded Player of the Month uh, in his first month, like. And the surprise that Brock Palmer is, and also Chase Kidney, and so many of the other rookies, I've really been impressed with how all of them have just come together and performed well. Well, as I was talking to the coach prior to the game tonight and asked him pretty much the same sort of question, what was the good, the bad, and the ugly? And, of course, uh, winning or uh, being first place in the, in the league was certainly the good part. Yep. Um, but even more than that um, is the, the sense in the room, mm-hmm. how cohesive like yep. you were. Um, that they, they've got a great room. Um, they all get along. Um, they had one kind of one issue, uh, but one of the players decided that he didn't want to play anymore, so so he left the team. Yep. Um, but other than that, uh, it's been uh, everybody's got everybody's back. Um, so it, it's that was the one thing that he thought was 
uh, as good as it was. He also talked about um, his three younger players, um, Gedney and uh, Russell uh, and Davies, uh, those players that um, kind of showed up and, and be, were leaders early in, early in the year and, yeah. and continue to be leaders. Um, the rookies um, that he's had, yeah, and, and we totally. talked about we talked about rookies versus rookies. Yes, um, <laughs> totally. And he was talking about the young players, mm -hmm. the younger players, how they came in and, and immediately started being leaders, and yeah. uh, that was one of the, one of his highlights of, of the year. Yeah. Um, and strangely enough, another highlight that uh, he thought was the best thing that could have happened. Uh, was an 8-1 to one loss to the Crescent Valley Thundercats. Yeah, I mentioned that, yeah. um, he said that that was actually a very good thing. They haven't lost since that game. Mm -hmm. uh, and they played a couple of really tough games, uh, yeah. some close games, but uh, that's where he thought that was actually a good thing that happened. It kind of sent a message that you have to do more than just lace up the skates in this league yes, you do. In, order to, in order to come away with wins. And, yeah. and uh, So he was, he was happy about that. Can I guess what his ugly thing was before you say the ugly thing? Sure, go ahead. The second period. And actually, he never said there wasn't oh. ugly. Uh, well, the, the second period has uh, has been uh, probably not the best three of the three periods. They've been outscored in the third or in the second period. If I remember numbers, mind you, this is from like three weeks ago when I was in Preston. Well, they they came into the second period here tonight with a with a two to nothing lead. Mm -hmm. uh, very quickly at the. Two minute and fifty seven second. That became a two to one lead. Yep. Uh, but they came right back and at uh, the nine minute mark, they Gedney got that nice second rebound mm -hmm. uh, and able to restore their three goal, their two goal lead. I always and get the sense they try to survive the second period. They start off well and they end well, and yep. the middle is survive. But that was going to be my guess of what Coach Stewart would say is the the ugly. Well, the, the Riders did not look look at all comfortable in that first period, and the Riders in that second period. Were the riders oh, that we were, that we came to uh, came to know? Yes, and they were standing like ready to go with like four minutes left in that intermission. They were. Ready. I think I think they wanted to get out of the room before <laughs> <laughs> before they froze. Well, no, no, be, be, before the coach the coaching staff finished finished the oh. tirade. <laughs> let's let's go stand and get ready because the coach is still yelling. <laughs> no, I can see the coach yelling. No, yeah, you're right. Well, they were outshot 21 to five in that first period. That so kind of I think the coaching staff <laughs> might have had a couple of choice phrases for for his charges. Mm -hmm. And they came in that second period, and, and for the first part of the period, I thought thought they pretty much regained dominance. Yeah. Uh, and then the Dynamiters kind of woke up, and, and then that was pretty much even through the period. Uh, the Riders outshot the Dynamiters 13 to 11 in that period, yep. um, which means that these two teams are relatively close. Um, in skill and, and ability, and the team that works the hardest is the team that's going to come away with the victory. Absolutely. And I thought uh, Fernie picked up their pace quite a bit in that second. Totally, I would agree. Wholeheartedly. So, <laughs> um, what else? What else is going on? Yeah, you I don't you don't have your your rankings or all that. No, sort of I, I. Life has just been rather busy this <laughs> month, so I didn't get around to any power rankings. I did do uh, player rankings, and I can't remember those, but what's been on my mind that's coming up is the Prospects game. Right, and that I, comes up on the 17th or something? A couple weekends from now. Yeah. I uh, can't remember the date now off the top of my head, but since it is like two, three weeks away, I was expecting like the rosters to be named, so I've been messaging some people in the league going, right. what's going on? And my understanding is every coach in the league has picked like, or nominated a couple players from their team, right. and they've sent it to the coaches that will be the coaches for the respective Kootenai Conference in Okanagan. And I would Conference, have to think that would be uh, um, Beaver Valley would be the coach because they they won the conference last year. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they go by coach winners. Like when I someone I was talking to was it would make sense that 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 would be the way to would. choose it, whether or not they do or not. Yeah. Um, so it, right now it's in the hands of those coaches to that are determining what the roster is going to be like for that prospect team. So I'm hoping anytime soon we'll get, get to know who's on that prospect lineup. Well, I can think of a, a, a couple of, of Dynamiters that uh, could easily be in that prospect scheme. Uh, we were talking about Cam, Cam Russell certainly could be could be one of those. Um, Gedney could be another one. He's got 19 goals yeah. uh, and, and, a, and a young rookie. So uh, those are two players from the Dynamiters that I think could, could easily be on that team. Uh, when you look at... Uh, the riders again because we're looking at like the players born in like 
like 2001, 2000, maybe a couple 99s. Right. Um, they have Ethan Jang, who was born in 01, yep. on the riders who could be a candidate. But then for 99s that you could push for would be Jordan Crom and Ryan Partaker. Both Crom and Partaker have been, been strong to, in tonight's hockey game. Yes, they have. Um, uh, Partaker particularly has been using his speed going wide on, on the defense. And, yeah, sorry, none of the... You can think Merkel, he's kind of struggled since going over to the Riders, but compared to that one awesome game he had with us. But for the, the Dynamers, surprisingly, like, they don't have a lot of double O or O one one players. Like, they have Risden and uh, Retke. And Riz Riz Rizden and Recky. Recky, yeah. And Rizden participated in that prospects game last year. Right. So it'd be interesting to see if he's a candidate this year. So what's what's Russell's birth year? I thought that was an 01. Russell? Uh, Cam Russell is a 99. Okay. So like Palmer and Russell, like he could make candidates for them because they're both 99s. But the preference has been for 01 and uh, the double Right. The, but, but the young, younger players. The yeah. younger players because it's the prospects. But... Uh, some of these 99 born players they come here so they can get some ice time and then return back to junior A so right. I think there's a push to try to get some of them in the game as well <coughs> so that will be I'm looking forward to that where is it being played this year? Uh, Kelowna in Kelowna so are you going to take the trip over? pardon? are you going to travel to Kelowna to go to that? Oh. <laughs> I will watch it online <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't believe anybody would want to go over Three mountain passes to get to get to Kelowna in you the know, middle of January. That's a, I will pass on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Where is your roads? dedication, man? <laughs> With the roads, how they are, just getting from my house here. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. So well, and, and we're getting some snowfall tonight, and we'll yeah. probably get a bunch tomorrow. Totally. Um, so it's it's going to be a. Well, I, I don't envy the uh, the trip back to uh, Fernie tomorrow tonight after the hockey game for the yeah. for the riders. Um, Tomorrow night, I think it should be okay because I think tomorrow is supposed to be a, a decent day uh, when, when the Dynamiters go yeah. to, to Sparwood mm -hmm. to play the, the back end of the home-and-home. Home. Mm -hmm. uh, so it shouldn't be too bad. But then on Saturday, we're going to get a bunch of snow again. So the um, mm -hmm. good news is that neither of those two teams are traveling on Saturday. Yeah. Strap on the skis. <laughs> well, it's been a little bit chilly to be, to be skiing. <laughs> That's very true. When Not as cold as the prairies where I used to live, where it was colder than Mars, the moon, and the North Pole. <laughs> throwing that out there so i love it here i don't know how cold i don't know how cold the uh, mars or, or the moon is if you're in the sun and the moon i think that's probably pretty warm yeah yes <laughs> but they don't get a lot of, they don't get a lot of snow on the moon no, they don't. <laughs> yeah. oh this is deteriorated so as far as, as bloggers blurb are you uh I haven't had had a chance to look at the the website. Have you put some some blogs on recently? No, I've had a ten day hiatus since our last game, which is was surprising because usually I piece together things like from the most recent EA Sports NHL 18, like who are these are the players that are alumni that are in the game and right. uh, compile that roster. I haven't done like I've made the team, but I haven't like made the, vi the video for it yet. So yeah, it's just been one of those holidays where I've focus more on family and friends than I that's have what, on the blog. And that's what this season is all about, is family <laughs> yes. and friends. Yeah. Uh, and just to let you know, in, in case you wanted to watch tonight's uh, the webcast, uh, we had an ex-Dynamiter, Kelly McLeod, oh. come in and chat us, chat with us, and he was uh, telling us about how his his playing time with, with Jeff Kiever and and Derek Stewart and uh, oh, some wow. of the other players that he played with back in the in the late 90s. It was, a, it was kind of a nice chat. So if That's you get a chance, you might... What I love about this time of year is the uh, the alumni that come to this game as well. Well, actually, Kelly's from, from Grand Prairie, but yeah. uh, they did they do have a cabin out at, at Wassa that they come down here. And they expect it to be warmer than Grand Prairie, but I, I'm not sure it is <laughs> this year. I think that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we got get ready yes. for the second period. Thanks uh, for having me. Josh Lockhart, the uh, bloggers blurb. Thank you very much for coming by, and we'll see you in the new year. We will see you in the new year. Thanks, buddy. Thanks.